Looks like Amazon has finally joined in on the AI ID race, as just recently, they had introduced a new agentic AI ID called Kiro. This ID is currently free in a preview phase. It's like cursor or windsurf, but with a polished interface and unique features like hooks and code with spec mode. Kiro is a VS Code fork, and it's an IDE for prototyping apps to production. It's capable of transforming your prompts into structured specs, system architecture, and concrete implementation plans, helping you define what to build before you actually generate any sort of code. With agent hooks, you can automate routine tasks such as generating tests, writing documentations, or optimizing code, all triggered by simply adding different sorts of events like file saves. It's multimodal and its interface allows you to upload UI screenshots or architecture diagrams, which Kiro can interpret to guide its coding decisions. It also has features like MCP integration, enabling direct connections to APIs, databases, and internal tools for full stack awareness. Now, something that I find different from other IDs that we've mentioned on the channel is that they've introduced a couple of new modes like the spec driven deployment. This is where they're able to turn prompts into clear requirements, designs, and linked tasks. This is something that I've showcased with different frameworks like context engineering or even something like uh, Context 7, where you provide the correct context to your AI agent to deploy the correct guidelines for the AI agent to follow. But in this case, it's ground up and built within the actual ID. So you don't even need to do anything of that sort. And it's able to follow your structure easily as it creates it. And that way the AI agent isn't able to hallucinate as much and it's able to output higher quality than other AI agents. Like I mentioned guys, this is in preview. So you wanna make sure you get the most out of this currently because it's completely free and there's unlimited usage at the moment. So make sure you get the most out of this and you can easily install it by going over to the download tab, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. And you can install it for whatever operating system you have, whether that's Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. After you have downloaded it, it's gonna ask you to sign up or sign in with these providers, whether that's Google, GitHub, or the AWS Builder ID, or you can sign in with your own organization's identity. Then it will request you to import configurations. You can migrate from VS Code or you can skip this. I'm gonna do this so that it installs all the necessary extensions that I have within VS Code. This will take a couple of seconds. It'll also uh, import all the themes that you have within your VS Code IDE. Now this is pretty important because you wanna make sure that you set up the shell. Make sure you click on this button so that you can have it integrated within the IDE. And once that's complete, you're gonna be able to now open up this beautiful new agentic IDE. Now to use this IDE, it's really simple. You just have the base command set over here. This is where you can open up the chat tab, which is the place you're gonna be working the most with Kiro. This is essentially the same sort of panel that you would see within any sort of AI IDE. And it's similar to many of these different extensions like Klein, Root Code, or even Kilo Code. Now, like I mentioned before, you have two modes. You have the vibe mode as well as the spec mode. The vibe mode is more of an autonomous generation that you would get from Kiro. And spec mode is something that is gonna take more time to plan through on executing your task. And then it's gonna use in-depth analysis to make sure everything is structured properly and executed efficiently. I would recommend you try out spec mode if you're prototyping on something that you're trying to deploy. Vibe mode is something that you would want quick generations from as well as helping you in most chat-based tasks like Q&As as well as explanations. Now to test this out and showcase the difference, let's have it generate a CRM dashboard that has a lot of features. Now you have the ability to add context similar to how you would with a cursor or even with Cascade. And you can even add images and use the Claude Sonnet 4.0 completely for free. You have an autopilot mode as well as you can toggle this off so that there's some sort of human in the loop with this generation. But we're gonna keep this on and have it generate this CRM dashboard for us. And it's gonna autonomously execute this task all on its own. And right away, you can see that it is working on executing this task and it is gonna work on the index.html file. This is where it has created the directory and you can see that it's gonna work on making all the changes necessary to create this CRM dashboard. What I really like about this is that they obviously give you the ability to review it, but there's already inbuilt checkpoints. So if you wanna undo changes, you can revert back to a previous checkpoint. 
Also, something that you should do is that you should enable autocomplete. This is something that is disabled for some reason. So make sure you go ahead and configure that so that autocomplete is enabled. Now, while this is generating the CRM dashboard, I want to make sure that you know that there is a Kiro tab as well. This is essentially where you have the ability to manage your specs, agent hooks, as well as agent steering and your MCP servers. So on the top right of this panel, you can create a new spec. This is like we did at the start where you have those two modes. But in this case, you can add in a spec that you want to have the AI follow a structured way to build your AI app. And you can just simply describe it over here so that it's able to follow this guideline. You also have agent hooks. This is where you have the ability to create this hook so that the agent can listen to the file changes and automatically trigger Kiro to take follow-up actions. So this way, it makes sure that it is following through with the different features that you have. It doesn't hallucinate and it makes sure it follows those features that you had requested at the start. You also have agent steering. Think of this as a rule book so that your AI agent is steering in the right direction. And MCPs are self-explanatory now. This is where you can easily go ahead and configure and add different MCPs within this JSON file. But essentially, guys, this is going to make the process of configuring any sort of development super easy. So rather than going into the settings, you can directly manage and disable or enable certain things while you're generating your AI app or prototyping anything. What you can do next is use the spec mode. And to demonstrate this, this is where I'm just simply sending in this prompt that I want to create the CRM dashboard, but I wanted to know that there is more improvements to all the features. And right away, you can see that it is reading the files to see what it can do to create a requirement sheet. So right now it is creating this sheet so that it's going to gear the AI agent to steer in the right way. You can actually take a look at this and this is where you can actually edit in real time and add new requirements as it's generating. And just like that, we have our CRM Pro dashboard fully generated. And this was something that it did pretty quickly. And that is why you would want to use the vibe mode so that you can autonomously prototype different sorts of app ideas. Now, something similar that you can do with other agentic AI IDEs is that you have the ability for inline edits. So this is where you can have it so that you can autocomplete certain sections of the code or ask the AI about certain things. So in this case, if I want, I can highlight a certain component of the code and I can do control plus L and it will add that reference to my panel. You also have it so that you can do inline edits. So this is where you can do control plus I and then you can make edits directly within the chat or the editor. Now, there's so many other commands that you can actually take a look at. If you press Control Shift P, you're going to be able to see that there is a list of different commands that you can use to deploy Kiro from debugging all the way to generating code. So you can see how refined this requirement sheet is. It's making sure that it is going to focus on all the different prompts I had requested for, and it's going to make sure that it creates the best sort of AI generation possible from the AI agent. Now, once you have finished and approved the requirement specs, you can then move on to the next thing, which is the design phase. So you can simply click on this button, which will take us to the next phase. So now it has created the requirements as well as the design. So this is where it has created a detailed plan as to how it's going to design all the different components. Now, once you have approved this, you can then obviously move on to the implementation plan where it's going to start coding this out completely for free using the Sonnet model. If you want it to refine the current uh, plan, you can simply click on this and it'll change up the design and the requirement plan that was generated by the AI. And there we go. Now our task list has been generated. So think of this kind of like context engineering, providing more context, more implementation steps to make sure that the AI model doesn't hallucinate. And this way, if you're able to create this detailed plan with the spec mode, you're going to be able to get better outputs than you would with the vibe mode. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. But that's basically it guys for today's video on Kiro. I definitely want to see what you guys think about it. So leave a like and a comment in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about it. I'll leave all these links in the description below so that you can easily get started. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel if you haven't already. Make sure you join the newsletter as well as our Discord. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
Make sure you turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.